because the movie is not an origin tale for Batman, but it's his early days, it really is an origin tale for the rogues galleries. While we knew we'd be getting introductions to Catwoman, Penguin, and the Riddler when the Batman came back to theaters, we got a surprise appearance from Batman's most infamous foe. We also got a chance to talk to co-writer and director Matt Reeves about the Clown Prince of Crime's big cameo. In the second to last scene of the film, Paul Dano's Riddler is locked up in Arkham when a voice from a neighboring cell reaches out to him. The voice belongs to Eternals actor Barry Keown, billed in the credits as unnamed Arkham inmate. And while the trademark cackle and clown references only hint at the character's true identity, Matt Reeves confirmed that it not only is the Joker, but he was originally meant for more than just the one scene. Well, you know what's interesting is that the the reason that Joker's in the movie is there was actually an, another scene that was earlier, the scene that was not in the movie, the scene that this is really the companion to, um, which is actually a really cool scene that, I, that we'll release at some point. It, it's a scene where Batman is so unnerved because the Riddler is writing to him, and he's like, well, why is this guy writing to me? And he figures he's got to profile this killer, and so he goes to see another killer that he's clearly had an experience with in these first two years, and this killer in this story is not yet the character that we come to know, right? So everybody's in their kind of infancy. So, you know, in, in the comics, these characters often declare their alter egos in, in response to the fact that there's a Batman out there. And so here we have a Joker who's not yet the Joker. And I wanted to do an iteration. I work with Mike Marino and in the scene that you'll see um, in the future, you'll see that we worked on uh, what he looked like and he's kind of held in, in this kind of very suspenseful way away from you visually. But he, I wanted to create an iteration of him that felt distinctive and new, but went right back to the roots. So he, he's kind of very much out of the Conrad Veidt sort of mold. And that idea of the silent film of the man who laughs, he's got this congenital disease, he can never stop smiling. And I was like, well, maybe there's something here where he, it's not something where he fell in a vat of chemicals, or it's not the Nolan thing where he has these scars and we don't know where they came from. What if this is something that he's been touched on, that he's been touched by from birth, and that he has a kind of congenital disease that, it, that refuses to let him stop smiling, and he's had this very dark reaction to it, and it's made him, he's had to spend a life of people looking at him in a certain way, and he knows how to get into your head. So this idea of him being very kind of incisive and brilliant and being able to get into your mind and having basically having this kind of nihilistic point of view that sort of like from his inception from his birth life has been a cruel joke on him and this is his response and he's eventually going to become declare himself as a clown declare himself as the joker all of this backstory begs the question why did he leave this scene in the film if he cut the joker's other appearance is this leading to joker's appearance in a batman sequel the idea for me that I, why I kept that scene in the movie, even though I cut the first scene that I'm describing, is because it was important for me at the end. I actually took the scene that's in the movie still out for a brief time, and we tested it, and I realized that for me, on the one hand, it finishes the Riddler's arc, because you know the way his story plays out, and you see him in the wake of what's happened and how Batman has been able to sort of thwart what he was doing. But it was also this idea, in this moment, now that the stranglehold um, of Falcone has been broken, it means that there is a moment of not only hope, but it's also the moment of greatest danger in the city in a long time, because it means that everyone is going to grab for power. And when Selina is talking to Batman at the end of the movie, and they're having their kind of very poignant goodbye, because they're always gonna be on the opposite sides of things, she says to him, you know this place isn't gonna change. And when I took the scene out, the stakes of the scene changed because that scene shows you that when she says that, you've just seen it, and you see the two of them next to each other, and that's just one sort of example of how trouble in Gotham is never gonna subside. There's always gonna be somebody with a plan afoot. And so it changed the movie dramatically. So the scene is not meant to be there to say like, oh, here's an Easter egg, the next movie is X. Like, I don't know that the Joker would be in the next movie, but I can tell you that here's what you're seeing is an early days version of this character, and trouble, as always, is brewing in Gotham. As if the challenges of presenting a distinctive take on one of the most infamous villains in pop culture wasn't enough, we followed up with Matt Reeves after this interview to talk about the challenges of keeping it all a secret and shooting fake scenes with Barry Keown as a cop named Stanley Merkel. You know, when you're, when you're making a movie like this, you want it to be different, you want 
people to feel like they're having a special experience. And then for me, when you're going to the cinema, you want some level of surprise. And I think one of the things I was worried about was speculation while we were making the movie that we would be exploring the character that we ended up exploring. So um, we started thinking, well, what can we do to throw people off that scent? So this idea of making him Stanley Merkel was exactly that, you know, because we, because the police force is actually a big part of the story. So it seemed credible that we could be doing that. So that was the, that was the goal. So, what did you think of Joker's cameo in The Batman, and where do you want them to take the character from here? Let us know in the comments, and for all other Gotham City news, stay right here on IGN.